What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Now, what if you could get five shots in your legs and never be at risk for open heart surgery? I asked longevity expert David Kekich what scientific advances he was most excited about, and he said gene therapy, Liz Parrish, and BioViva Sciences, and we have all three today. So today we have Elizabeth Parrish, she's founder and CEO of BioViva Sciences. They build gene therapies to help with genetic disorders and aging to greatly extend the lifespan. She's also the founder of Biotrove Investments, which is committed to fund research in regenerative medicine. And she is known as the woman who wants to genetically engineer you. Liz, thanks for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to chat. And I always like to get a fun fact that most people don't know about you. I'm surprised that most people don't know this fact about you is that you're a vegetarian. I am. I've actually been a vegetarian for 20 years and uh, most people, you know, I don't talk about it a lot. I don't push it on anyone and so when they sit down to eat with me in a steak restaurant because they choose the restaurant, right. they're surprised that I'm like ordering all the sides and, and, and not the steak itself. What made you decide to become a vegetarian? You know, I actually, I uh, lived on Capitol Hill in Seattle for a while growing up and um, I was pressured by some friends to try it out okay. and I did. I've always been really active. Uh, I think that, you know, they were doing it for, for mor moral reasons and things like that mm -hmm. and, and I agreed it was something that I should try. Um, I found that I was just as active on a vegetarian diet as I was otherwise, and so I just stuck with it. Um, yeah. It just seemed like if I wasn't missing anything, that there was no reason to go back, and so I just continued to stay the course. Yeah, yeah. See, I was sort of surprised by that because, you know, I watched your talk, about, and we'll talk about the five shots in your legs, open heart surgery. I, was gonna, I thought you were going to say, I eat steak every day because I can because all I need to do is give five shots and my, my heart disease, my atherosclerosis is, is no more. Um, so I want to talk about some of these you know, advances. Start off, talk about those five shots in your legs and never being at risk for open heart surgery. What did you mean when you said that? Okay, so we're working on a therapy right now for atherosclerosis. Mm -hmm. We were initially working on it for sarcopenia. It's a gene that's a myostatin inhibitor. So it inhibits myostatin, which uh, allows your muscles to grow bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, we were working with this, and we found some anecdotal data that, in fact, it was reversing atherosclerotic plaques. Mm -hmm. So heart disease kills a third of the population, right. and um, this is the this is the major killer. It, it rarely has to do with your uh, the cells in your your actual heart it's the the plaque in the lining of your arteries that busts loose and, and causes the problem yeah so how do you begin because that seems like a huge undertaking how do you begin to start to do research on on something like that Okay, so what BioViva does is we look at research that's already been done. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of data out there already. There's a lot of animal studies. Many of these uh, gene therapies have come all the way up through animal models. Mm -hmm. And this very gene therapy that we're working with is actually in phase three clinical trials with children with muscular dystrophy. Wow. So what we do is we look at the trail. We look at the track. We don't start from ground one. We're, we're, we don't want to be a, a hard research organization. Uh, a lot of that work has already been done. Yeah. We want to pick up the pieces where it's already been done and see what can actually be done in humans uh, to save lives now. Yeah, yeah. So what is, it, what is most exciting to you with the advancements of anti-aging? Well, I think that obviously gene therapy, uh, this, this is uh, the culmination of the most elegant uh, therapies that, that we could devise. It, the simplicity of it is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, to just take your, your cell and in, insert the gene that creates the protein that you need to be younger, healthier, stronger, faster, more visually accurate is, um, it's, it's just, it's nothing short of miraculous. Yeah. So is, how is it administered? 
Uh, by, by injection. Yeah. So uh, gene therapies are administered by injection. And uh, I know that people don't like shots <laughs> very much um, when you're young and when you're older. Uh, people inherently don't like the look of a needle coming at them. But if it could keep a scalpel from coming to you and, sure. you know, the barbarisms of, you know, how we do uh, medical, uh, you know, techniques right now, I think that it would be very worth it. And I think people would be really excited about the, the switch. So how does it work? You get a shot. How does it know where to go from there? Okay, so we work with we we actually work with AAV, which is a very specific uh, delivery uh, viral delivery mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, the virus essentially has its replicative uh, cap taken out, so it can't replicate in your system. So the, our viruses can't make you sick. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we insert the gene that we want your body to start producing the protein from mm -hmm. into the viral vector. The, the great thing about AAV is there are several different serotypes. And so a serotype is kind of like a specific type of virus to infect a spe specific type of cell. Yeah. So it only transduces into the cell that we're targeting uh, for the most part. So that, that would be, you know, neural or, uh, you know, skin tissues or muscle, yeah. uh, things like that. So the muscular dystrophy, they would target the muscle tissue and it would go in and and yeah, help with that. Exactly. They yeah. would target myocytes. So you do a lot of, you know, research across the the you know, across the board of what is out there and what is being researched. What has blown your mind from when you actually dug in and you found out what was what has already been done? Well, what I was really amazed by when I got involved in this is that uh, aging in animals had been reversed. Yes. Uh, that um, you know, muscle mass had been increased. Um, that uh, just just the I guess that you know the the root of gene therapy had uh, and and its outcomes had had really amazed me how powerful this tool is and it and it makes sense I mean if you believe in evolution <laughs> you know if you believe that your genes are transcribing who you are what you look like how you think and and everything else which is based in scientific evidence you can see the power of this tool yeah yeah i remember one of your talks you said the only gene therapy that reversed aging in animals so what was that what, what did they do so that's an h tert gene therapy so that's a telomerase inducing uh, gene therapy so what it does is it um, turns on telomerase in your cells and it lengthens the telomeres at the ends of the chromosomes and when you lengthen these telomeres you shore up a lot of the damage that has been done to the DNA over time yeah. and it resets the what's called the Hayflick limit so if you need me to go back I can always go back and really make these simplistic yeah. uh, but many of your cells have a limited number of times that they can divide and it's based on how long your telomeres are right. uh, so when telomeres get short bad things happen that's what Bill Andrews says from Sierra Sciences and it's absolutely true you can actually measure uh, the length of your telomeres and see how close you are to essentially uh, your mortality really so yes yes you can uh, and short telomeres uh, you're 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 very close. So you're you're born with about fifteen thousand base pairs, and then uh, no, you're you're conceived at about fifteen thousand base pairs. You're born at ten thousand, and by the end of your life, you're about five thousand base pairs. Mm. Uh, so this gene therapy actually lengthens those telomeres, resets that limit, and allows your cells to divide many more times than they would have otherwise. Yeah. Wow, that's really it's it's amazing that we figure that out. How do you measure them? Well, there are a couple ways to measure them. Uh, one way you can do it is you can measure that, that telomerase is turned on in a cell. Uh, that's one way, and that's uh, sort of a speculative way to do it. They do that with cancers. Uh, in cancer, about 80% of cancers have telomerase turned on in them uh, because it's one of the cells that often gets torn open and, and turned on during those. Uh, but the other way is uh, they, will actually, they can actually measure lengths uh, through different companies, and I think that LifeLink is one that you want to look at for mm -hmm. that and they can tell you the specifics on how they do yeah, that yeah so what are you most excited about with BioViva sciences lately what I'm really excited about is that we're going to proceed into some testing and see what happens uh, with people under compassionate care who are dying now, uh, what happens when we use some of their, these gene therapies uh, in their bodies. And this is where the, the work had actually lacked evidence, okay? Mm -hmm. 
uh, that's why I got involved. So I had I had started a company called Biotrove. I, we may have talked about that, and that was seeking investment for these type of sciences, right. uh, these type of sciences to solve these very important problems. Uh, what they didn't have is they didn't have human evidence. And so what BioViva has come together to do is to create that human evidence mm -hmm. and to use these therapies in compassionate care scenario in, in, in scenarios where we may not only be able to reverse somebody's disease, but uh, reverse the aging of their cells as well. Mm -hmm. So what disease are you starting with or do you start with a different different ones? Yeah, so we're starting with two. We're, we're, we've, we've shot for very big targets. Uh, we're shooting for atherosclerosis mm -hmm. and uh, Alzheimer's. Wow. And I'll tell you why. So when we were first looking at the myostatin inhibitor, we were looking at it for sarcopenia. And with sarcopenia, this is basically muscle wasting over time. So after about the age of 30, you lose a percentage of your muscle mass every year. Uh, this leads to frailty. Frailty kills about 6% of the population. It's, uh, you know, you, you hear about that. You hear about people falling down you and breaking. break a hip, yeah. then yeah. Yeah, so that's a big deal. And so we wanted to get these people uh, running upstairs again. And we had every bit of data that this therapy worked. As a matter of fact, it's the one that I told you that they're actually using in children for muscular right. dystrophy. Uh, after treating a, a, a patient or two, we actually found evidence that it was reversing ather atherosclerotic plaques, wow. um, that their, their tests were coming back uh, very different. Uh, one of our patients, after one year, um, we have the CT angiogram, and both their left and right arterial arteries are completely clear of plaque. That's amazing. Yeah, so what we need to do is we need to do the right thing, which is move this forward and to see if our anecdotal data is actually correct. So we want to raise money, we want to bring in investment to run clinical trial on humans to see if in fact this is the case, if this will be the case across the board. Yeah, so when do you, have you already started the human trials or when do those start? We're, we're raising money for that now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have we have treated a few patients with the the therapy already, yeah. uh, but again, that was for a different indication. It's just the numbers were coming back so clearly on reversal of uh, um, these plaques that we we feel like it's a mandate now to move forward to see what we've got. And what? How do you choose the patient? You know, because you could choose probably people on different ends of the spectrum of how sick they are, or they're on that brink of sickness. Right. So we'll, we'll do it a little bit differently for each treatment. Uh, generally what we do is we, we choose people over a certain, a, an age of 50. We choose people that are out of their childbearing years. Uh, we choose people on varying ends of the spectrum depending on uh, what part of the trial we're in. For Alzheimer's, uh, we're actually going to be moving forward with the telomerase-inducing gene therapy. Uh, with that treatment will actually choose people that have Alzheimer's but are in probably early to mid state uh, then working into later state as we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Liz, what's the hardest part of your job? <laughs> I, you know, I love my job. Uh, so I'm not sure what's hard about it. Uh, I, it feels like it's a real big call to action. I'm very mm -hmm. passionate about it. I, I think I love everything about it. Uh, what is the hardest part of my job? I just, I like all of it. <laughs> Cause I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, these are huge things that you're dealing with and yeah. they require a lot of funds you know, oh, to, that to do okay. that. And so I'm thinking yeah. with all you've done, how do you get these, these people on board or companies to fund this? Yeah. Okay. So definitely, uh, funding and finding investment is number one, uh, most difficult thing. Um, I like everything around that. I like going and talking to people and getting people encouraged about it. Yeah. Biotech has a, a very, uh, longstanding hard road, uh, to, to travel. And right. we are trying to sort of uproot that. We're trying to change that at the very point. So in the past, you know, uh, a company would have had to raise like, you know, a billion dollars. And, and now that's right. skyrocketing to almost $2 billion yeah. to get through clinical trials in the U.S. Yeah. What we're doing is uh, changing this inherently by um, 
changing our platform completely. So what we want to do is we want to try to treat people under compassionate care um, in a different uh, setting and in a different way that costs a lot less money to get something through um, the FDA. So uh, this is probably uh, the, the biggest uh, jump and the biggest leap, but what we can do is we can take what would have cost two billion dollars and then uh, the, the what happens on the other end of two billion dollars is a very expensive cure. It, what happens is a lot of investors want to get their money back. Right. Uh, we can take something like that and we can actually raise just a few million dollars and do this in a completely different way that will get us breakthrough status here in the with the FDA and hopefully change the paradigm of how we can help other small biotechs uh, catalyst off of our platform yeah yeah because I'm thinking when I was looking through your bio there's so much experience on that the fundraising side of things as well so I was curious of what has worked for you because obviously, you know, you're going after huge, uh, huge endeavors here. Yeah, so what we have is uh, we have really passionate people. Uh, we have uh, generally we look for private investment uh, because we're doing things a very different way. Yeah. Uh, we look for people who want to extend their life. Uh, we have a lot of interest. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're the platform to find out if what we have now uh, will in fact cure disease. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's like I said, it's a mandate uh, to help people uh, yeah. to create a, a better scenario of outcome for people who are sick who have no other option. Right now we're losing over 100,000 people every day to the disease of aging, right. uh, various aging symptoms. And so um, we have more than enough pool to draw from to not just create hope, but potentially create a cure. Yeah. What's been your favorite story if there is one? I can imagine if they hear, you know, um, Alzheimer's, that people are just reaching out to you family members of you know someone who's who's suffering with it do you get a lot of those stories saying please like just do a trial on my mom or dad or or grandma because they're just so desperate yeah we do we actually have a lot of people who reach out for to us to um, treat their family members, uh, to treat themselves. Maybe they have a, an early diagnosis. It's a very difficult situation right now because gene therapies are amazingly expensive to build. Yeah. Uh, so you cannot uh, get a gene therapy uh, for a low price anywhere. Uh, what we would like to do is to um, have the ability to test these gene therapies in very sick people and what we hope is that we'll be able to drive the prices so low that we will um, make a situation where the government uh, can actually give these therapies for free. Well, wow. How expensive is the like, administration of a gene therapy like that for Alzheimer's? Yeah, so it can be really expensive. So, you know, you're looking at over $100,000 generally. Yeah. You need to have the product made GMP. There's a high standard. Um, mm -hmm. They're very expensive therapies to make. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very expensive proposition. Now, is it something that obviously you have to go through trials and research, but if someone comes to the organization and says, I don't care, money's no object, I just want it done, can that, can that happen? Well, as long as they're educated, they understand, and we have uh, signed a lot of consensual papers. I mean, they would have right. to have a, a, a massive understanding of what the, what they were going through, that this, in fact, would be a, a permanent gene therapy in many cases with AAV. Right. Um, you know... Um, we would we would want them to be in a scenario where, of course, uh, you know, we felt like we were treating a patient. Right, uh, right. I think that there's a, there's a there's a line between human enhancement yeah. and um, and disease, and I think that we're going to blur that line in the future. I think that we're going to. Right. Uh, yeah, as soon as you say like muscle enhancement with the heart, I'm thinking athletes are going to start injecting them. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, uh, well, and, and it, it could actually protect athletes against, you know, heart attacks on the field. Um, I think that what will happen is initially we'll start treating disease and these sort of therapies will be moved back younger and younger, uh, much like immunizations. Mm -hmm. We'll want to catch these diseases long before they happen if we really want to save the money mm -hmm. uh, down the road, uh, the cost incurred from these very expensive diseases. So... 
Yeah, I, I, I know that uh, there is a lot of hesitation one way or another, but you know, I think that you do have to think very carefully about when something is enhancement and when something is preventative medicine. And I really think that this line is, will be very blurry and we will start treating people younger and younger in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, what I also noticed about your site is you have this amazing scientific advisory board. I'm wondering some of the valuable advice they've given you and the company that helped shape BioViva. Well, yeah, they they definitely have given me uh, great advice. And one of the, the, the thing that I think resonates with me from all of the, my, our scientific advisory board is that we have a big push to, to go and get it done. Yeah. You know that that the most important thing is that this gets done. Um, the most important thing is that we don't uh, sort of retain a traditional image of twenty years through the you know trying to get something through the FDA and coming out with a very expensive cure that um, may or may not uh, get to the general population. Um, the idea is to get this done in our lifetime so that we can we can benefit from it. Right. Right. Is there any particular person on the board that you remember um, giving you some really crucial advice at a, a crucial time? Like I was looking at, I mean, you have just all these MDs, PhDs, Dr. Andrews, I know you've mentioned a few times uh, in your talks in here. Has he given you any specific um, valuable advice as you kind of, because this is, you know, a new path, this, you know, for, for society and for these for aging yeah so i think you know I, yes i can say definitely yes but again it's just a resounding go and get the get the job done um from from every every one of those persons joined because they knew that what we were doing was really pushing forward uh good medicine pioneering new therapies now um in a way that uh would make it so that they would be available to the world uh, in shorter order than than the system that we we are living under right now. Yeah. So, Liz, what's some of the most common objections you get from people? Because I'm sure you get a lot of people who are excited about this, and probably some people who want to argue against why this may not be the best thing. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't think I've ever sat down and talked to anyone who who didn't uh, didn't agree that it was a good idea to uh, you know cure suffering. Uh, yeah you know, through disease uh, the best we can. We can't obliterate all suffering on the planet, uh, but we can in start with these diseases. And I think that people do like the idea of that. I think that a lot of people have worry about things like world population, mm -hmm. um, and we have lots of answers for that. So, you know, we do study that. We do study uh, demographics and, and what the world looks like. As a matter of fact, uh, w the population is, is switching so much right now that for the worldwide population, this isn't in one of the industrialized countries, but for the worldwide population, by 2020, we'll have less people under the age of five than mm. over the age of 65. Wow. And people are calling it the silver tsunami. And what and that, that accounts for every country. So as, um, as life expectancy goes up, uh, fertility rates go down, and that's across the world, and regardless of the religion, regardless of the culture. So I think that this is one of the, the questions that I get quite often, and we already are at a massive decline. But the problem herein lies is that those people who are under five become the workforce. Uh, they become the workforce, they become the people who are paying for the silver tsunami uh, illness train that's about to just wreak havoc mm -hmm. coming right through you know this is trillions of dollars um, you know on the line and, and unfortunately everything comes down to money and, and whether you can pay your bills to keep your lights on so this this is something that if people look at the numbers and they look at the diagram they can see the strong interest in creating a youthful healthy uh, population yeah. because these young people can't afford to to pay these, these right healthcare costs. If we don't slow that down, it's just going to hit like a tsunami and there's going to oh, be big yeah. issues. It's, it's, it's going to be. And now people are living longer than ever. So people are living up to 120 years. You know, we're seeing that and it's becoming more and more prevalent. As a matter of fact, it's predicted that by 2030, 400% more people will live over the age of 100. 
Well, people are retiring halfway through that. So right. you know, <laughs> yes. survive. You know, when I ask yes. people, I, you know, there'll be hesitation. I'll say, how would you like to reverse your aging and go back to work? <laughs> they're like, no, I want to be retired, but they want to have the ability to do all the things that they want to do. And right. most people are like, if you could make me feel young, strong, look mm. healthy, I, yes, I would definitely go back to work. You know, people are retiring at 65 with disability, you know, with right. disease. Right. So this is a, this could be a big switch, a yeah. big change for us. You know, Liz, it's interesting. I want to go back to the early days of your career. How did you get into this? Where did you start? Well, actually, I had gotten a, a science degree. I yeah. had taken biology at the University of Washington. I did not get a PhD or an MD. So, yeah, it is interesting. So where did I come from? I, I, I actually had worked in the tech industries for years. Um, and I was, uh, I ha was unfortunate enough to be touched by childhood disease. Hmm. Uh, then I had a myriad of friends uh, also be touched with, with the same issues. Like a family uh, so, member, you mean? Or mm -hmm, yeah. Yes. So I ended up spending some time in Children's Hospital. And I saw a lot of sick kids. And hmm. a lot of kids that, you know, I probably are gone now. And Sad. it yeah. was... It was very, you know, I, I can talk about people getting old uh, and the suffering diseases of aging, but childhood disease is very difficult for me. Yeah. So I really wanted to solve that problem. And with the knowledge that I had had in the past, I thought there there had to be an answer to this. And so I had gotten involved in stem cell work for a couple years. Yeah. And I had um, tried to become a platform for education to educate yeah. people what was happening in stem cells. And then I ended up finding the Sense Foundation. And mm. I saw that they were going to have a, a conference on genetics of, of aging. Yeah. So I got on a plane and I flew out to uh, Cambridge, UK. And I sat through many lectures, many of which I couldn't understand. <laughs> and many of which actually the microbiologists sitting next to me couldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> but You're like, it's not I, just me. Yeah. yeah, what I did is I got all of these people off to the side and I said, what does this mean? Right. What can we do with this? Yeah. And one of the people that I actually pulled to the side was George Church. And I had no idea who I was talking to. I, I was, you know, I was just stepping in and, uh, you know, I left that conference uh, with a with a completely new idea in my mind mm -hmm. and that we could effectually uh, change disease uh, from the genomic level and that we would in fact do this and uh, and we would change uh, the paradigm of childhood disease uh, through um, curing aging as a disease uh, they yeah. they're all actually closely uh, entwined and I thought that um, there were so many old people on the world that would be interested in this that through uh, evidence-based medicine in treating aging as a disease we would in fact be able to cure childhood disease so a lot of people don't know that I actually got into this to cure childhood disease yeah so when you discovered it at that conference and you're you you said okay this is the path I'm gonna take what'd you do next well, I started Biotrove oh you did Oh, yeah, wow. started Biotrove. I, 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 several people that I had talked to at that conference, I hooked up. I said, I want to try to find funding for what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, I met Bill Andrews soon after. I, I predominantly worked for Sierra Sciences, uh, trying to find funding for them for a year. The, the problem was is that there was all of this great scientific evidence. There was age reversal in animals. There were there were a myriad of great gene therapies that were yeah. starting to hit clinical trials. But there were two things that weren't happening. One, in the most extreme cases of age reversal, these were not being used in humans. So there was no human evidence that any of these worked. Yeah. Uh, and number two, we were still treating one symptom with one treatment. Okay, so for instance, the muscular dystrophy, yeah. if this in fact is a treatment for atherosclerosis, something that affects the entire world, uh, you don't want to have to have muscular dystrophy to get the uh, treatment, and we don't want to have to wait 30 years to find out if these children who had muscular dystrophy in fact don't die of heart disease. 
Right. Uh, you know, all indications are pointing uh, that, you know, we can use each gene therapy for a specific use to actually tackle the bigger problem, which is the cellular degeneration that's happening in the cell over time. So, you know, a lot of people think of Alzheimer's and cancer and heart disease and nephropathies, which is kidney failure, as, uh, you know, diseases on their own, but evidence is pointing to that actually it's aging as a disease that is the disease and so that's why we tackle aging and that actually tackles everyone so you know you have aging when you're born uh, you have it throughout your life uh, and then you die of it but if we can tackle that cellular aging we can we can change the paradigm of, of how we die and we can change the paradigm of also what's happening to children yeah so this what brought you from biotrove to bioviva it was just that. Uh, I traveled around. I got to travel around to a lot of uh, incredible places and meet a lot of uh, wealthy persons who were really interested in the science. They were interested in putting money in. Mm -hmm. There was no human proof. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent then at that point about two years putting BioViva together and finding medical doctors that would in fact uh, treat patients with gene therapies, uh, finding uh, support systems of people who were interested in helping me move this forward. Uh, it, it has, uh, it's been an incredible uh, journey. Uh, you know, it's actually hard to find people who will do those things, microbiologists that will help uh, devise and, uh, therapies after looking through, you know, hundreds of papers of research and putting together how would you treat a person with this gene therapy how much do you need what will it take you know it's still um, it's still really in its infancy yeah I thought it was interesting when we were talking a little bit earlier about the talk you gave at people unlimited and that they had tried a lot of things for longevity purposes did they find and obviously they brought you on to talk about the gene therapy and the next you know, the next phase, the science of what they can do, was anything working for them that they could do on their own? Well, I'm sure that good, good choices, uh, good healthy choices, exercise and things like that were certainly helping them. Uh, yeah. If you want to lengthen your life, you do not want to be obese. That will definitely shorten your life. Uh, you definitely want to eat well. You don't want to make uh, bad choices. Uh, you know, you're feeding your cells. So, they had made a lot of good choices, but what was being seen was that inevitably, uh, you know, the, the body uh, t still accumulates this damage. So there is there are plenty of ways to, to slow uh, de cellular degeneration or aging, and those are those things that they were doing. Uh, but they're obviously there are a bunch of people who are radical life extensionists, uh, meaning they want to uh, bust this bottleneck of the 120 right. uh, zone. And there's one way to do that, and that's uh, with uh, good cellular science. Yeah, I've never seen so many standing ovations in my life in one talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're fantastic. Really wonderful. I think people. it was because your cool cartoons, too, that you showed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. I like to use cartoons because I really like to lighten the conversation. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a way to make this way too heavy. You know, a lot of people don't want to talk about death, but it's actually something that we all have in common. Mm -hmm. So, how do you talk about that and sort of keep it light and easy? Well, you you have to interlace it with uh, some some fun and, and some laughter because otherwise uh -huh. people are not interested. Yeah. No, I like the one, I think it was a mouse like talking to the patient saying like, too bad, like your treatments won't be approved for a while. <laughs> and the, the mouse yeah. is walking out of there like fine. Me, I go home today. I'm afraid it'll be 15 years before right. you see a treatment. Right, yeah. exactly. Um, and it looks like you do some work with corporations too. Um, what kind of work do you do with the Stevia Corporation? So with Stevia, we have a collaborate, collaborative effort uh, to look at genes uh, for actually diabetes type 2. Mm. So they have a, a database that they've been running some big data on, and they are trying to uh, hone down what, in fact, uh, might be the cause of diabetes type 2. We know that it's a combination of cellular degeneration and uh, genetics, uh, but we'd like to know exactly what that is. Uh, one of the, the gene therapy that I've already told you about, the one that we were using for circuit 
that we want to test for atherosclerosis may in fact be a great treatment for diabetes type 2. It increases mm -hmm. muscle mass, it decreases white fat. Uh, so this would definitely help these people uh, get a essentially a leg up on, on the disease uh, by that and it increases insulin sensitivity as well. Mm -hmm. So this is one angle that we have already but we want to continue to uh, search uh, the genome for for other potential weak weak zones. So how did that come about? When I read that, I'm like, that seems random. Stevia Corporation <laughs> and BioViva. Well, you know, you, actually, probably the best thing to do is to talk to Bobby Brooks about that. Um, he they they came to us, and you know, Stevia first is trying to create healthy choices for people who um, like the sweet taste of food. Yeah. Obviously, Stevia being an alternative uh, to sugar. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think that the people who get together to create a company like that are really motivated to do things uh, for health purposes. Yeah. And so, you know, he just so, so happens to be of a scientific mind as well as his uh, board of advisors. And so that was a, that was a good uh, connection for us to make. It was, it was a strong connection. We want to be connected with health too. So I know that like we were talking about before, you know, you know, you pictured me eating a steak and, and taking my shots. So that right. <laughs> uh, unfortunate, uh, pro uh, likelihood is that I'm building plaques whether I eat a steak or not but maybe just at a little bit slower rate right. um, you know these these uh, therapies uh, tie in um, directly with you know lifestyle choices and so what we're excited about uh, this gene therapy for um, sarcopenia and atherosclerosis is that perhaps people who right now are inactive that, that have not really been active their entire life because of the effort, because of uh, their inability to sort of uh, get over that, the curve of, you know, when you, you go out and you exercise and now you're sore for a couple of days and then they just don't want to get back and do that again. They don't realize that they're ever going to get through that. Uh, this would, we hope, create a healthier society, a society where, you know, I just took a hike um, a couple of days ago uh, that was really extreme and you know we only ran into three other people um, on that trail you know right. wouldn't it be nice if we ran into 20 or 50 or 100 and everyone was going up to the mountain uh, to see what the view looked like and really enjoy uh, you know our mother earth yeah well for sure so, so it's you know, um, so I was gonna say what other partnerships do you have um, or that are in the in the wings that you would like to make with these type of companies? Because I think it's an yeah. interesting, when I read that, I thought that seems like a perfect perfect match. I wouldn't have thought of about bringing in like a corporation in with, with BioViva. Well, you know, we'll see. There's there's a there's a couple that I can't talk about yet because they're they're in the making. Uh, but one thing that we would really like to do, uh, call out, is we would like to uh, get some sort of um, collaborative effort with a company that does gene sequencing, uh, so that we can actually follow our patients and have them do the the sequencing and and find uh, where our genes landed in their cells, mm -hmm. and um, right. You know that that would be fantastic, and, and show that you know how long uh, the the genes uh, stay in their cells. With AAV, it's it's very likely that we will uh, produce these proteins for the lifetime of your body, and that was one of the reasons that we chose that that viral vector. But uh, that that's a partnership that we'd like to make. You know, someone mm -hmm. you know. It's, it's nice to put in par some parcel of companies who are really good at what they do. We don't have to be good at everything. We'd like to be good at one thing, maybe three things, and uh, create a community around what we do and let them be good at what they do and, and help us there, and that would be yeah. fantastic. Liz, so out of the people you're not talking to, I don't know if you can, you can answer this, but who would be your ideal partner for a company that you haven't talked to yet? Maybe someone out there works for this company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. You know, I think yeah. that we'll find all of our good fits. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of large companies out there that have recently got involved with uh, trying to cure aging as a disease. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if they're good fits for us or not. What, what we would like to do is uh, find the cures 
um, get the evidence, uh, build the therapies, and then have governments all around the world uh, actually disseminate these therapies for free. So it's not a big business model. It's right. just about getting the job done. If health was free, if health was free, the government would save a trillion dollars. Right. You know, if health was health was free, we'd have an incredible landscape on which to create a better society and take care of the environment. Yeah. Uh, you know, so and then you know, BioViva will go on to do uh, all sorts of fun things. I always say we'll make your eyes green and your uh, or your your eyes purple and your hair green. You know, we we would like to go into the funner aspects of of gene therapy, but right now we're we're battling. Uh, staying alive long enough to <laughs> achieve all those funner things. Right, right. You know, so I always ask, since it's Inspired Insider, um, what's been the lowest point in your life and how you fought through those tough times? Well, I really think that it was seeing all of those sick kids. I think that it was spending some time in Children's Hospital, and um, I've, got a, I've got a friend who has a child who has Crohn's disease. I know a child with diabetes type 1. I've known children born with congenital diseases that didn't survive. Yeah. Um, I've had experience with children with cancer. Uh, those, those are the low points. Horrible. And yeah. from those is where I, the, the fire of creativity comes from. You know, when I get on a plane and I have a meeting and I come back and, you know, I don't know whether it's either here or there and I'm so tired, I think these kids are waking up every day in that hospital and there's no cure. Right. And, you know, until there is, I can keep going because, you know, as an adult, I've had my firsts. You know, I, I had, I've been able to do all the things that these children won't be able to do. Right. And then they're not the only one affected, their families are affected. And my friends who have these children, I see them affected all the time and them trying to create a normal world around something that, that is really insidious and, and, and should not exist as soon as we can eradicate it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I take those low moments and uh, those are my sticks and my tinder and uh, I light a fire and yeah. I just keep going. That really drives you forward, yeah. It drives me like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I could tell. Um, what about the proudest moment when you look back on what have you been especially proud of? I don't have those. I think that um, I'm still climbing that hill. There, there's nothing to be proud of until we're done. Yeah. Any milestone with BioViva that you were able to hit, even though it's the next, getting to the next level? Not till we're done. Yeah. <laughs> you have your eye on the prize. Yep. You, you, won't, you won't catch me out celebrating uh, <laughs> things that, that are um, part and parcel of of what really needs to happen. Yeah. Who's been an influential mentor for you? You know, I have no heroes. Um, I, I, I believe that the, I, I like the humans in general work towards making a better world. I like that science uh, works towards accomplishing tasks and getting things done. Um, I admire anyone who stands out and actually gets the job done. You can't just talk about it. I guess the funny, I, this is really off, but if there was somebody I really liked, I think it's Jane Good, Goodall uh, in the work that she's done with primates uh, because mm -hmm. she's a person who is tireless even though uh, she, I think that she'd probably appreciate a break and she gets out there. She gets out there. She gets it done. She goes in the field. She goes in front of people. She does all the things that she didn't intend to do uh, to make a better world and to try to fix a situation. Yeah. So, Liz, what are some of your a few of your daily rituals that you find uh, to be important that other people should look at? Maybe, maybe I should be a little more like Liz in, in that respect. <laughs> I don't think anyone <laughs> should be like me. Um, I work all the time. I I. Yeah, what's a typical it, day? Like, what time do you wake up in the morning? Okay, sometimes I wake up as early as five thirty in the morning. 
Uh, one of the first things I actually do, and this is this is every day that I'm at home, is I, I go outside, whether it's uh, icy or rainy or whatever, I go out in my bare feet and I actually just say thank you to the day. Really? I, it's, it's, a, it's an okay. interesting thing. I was not raised religious or anything like that, but uh, every morning I will go out and I do my stretches and I bow down and I say thank you and that's the way I start I that. and that's the way I finish the day too. <laughs> really? Sounds very bizarre. I love it. I I really feel like you you need to to stay in touch with uh, with your environment. So whether it's rain or snow, it doesn't matter. Regardless, wow. You should be thankful. Yeah. You should be thankful because uh, yeah, I have a warm house to go into. It doesn't matter if my feet yeah. are cold. This yeah. is the world I live in, and if if I want to live longer and I want to do great things, number one thing is to appreciate uh, the earth. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's great. <laughs> I can visualize that. There should be a poster. Like, <laughs> that I say that. Now, that's really, uh, that, there's something that nobody knew. That <laughs> <do>. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I have one more question for you, Liz. I really appreciate your time. I just love the intensity, you know, of you just have your eye on the prize and you're just not going to stop until you get it. Not going to stop. You know, I think I read the longest LinkedIn uh, testimonial I've ever read and someone left for you. It was like, you know what I'm talking about? It was maybe four yeah. pages long. <laughs> oh, my God. You check it out on your LinkedIn profile. Okay. Dr. Andres uh, something. But, yeah, now I could see why. <laughs> um, but I have one last question. Um, but, but before I ask it, just tell people where can they find you, where, they can, where can they find uh, what you're doing? Well, you can go to biovivasciences.com. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the, the best way to, to find us. Um, mm -hmm. We have a little website. It, there's not a ton of information on it. There's some information on it. You can contact us through the contact page, and I often uh, will come. Will, will respond to, to the emails. I have someone who responds to them, but if anything that's special or either look, asking for a specific question or if you say you know, you, you'd like to ask something of Liz, it might take me a minute. Uh, or a couple of days, but I, I get back to those emails. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it, people should check it out and just look through the the team. And there's also a YouTube video that you gave to the the people unlimited, which is really interesting talk uh, that people should, should also also check out. So, last question, Liz, is what should we leave with people today? What you know, what uh, advice or parting words? Yeah, so I, I hope that, you know, we were able to sort of make things clear about, you know, where medicine stands, and, and I'm not sure if we did or not. Uh, gene therapy, we, we just stand on the precipice of the biggest change uh, to medicine in, in the history of, of the earth, of the world, of the humankind. I really want people to look into it and see it for what it is, uh, to see how powerful it is, and yet to see how um, the, the benefits. I want them to spread the word about it. I want them to contact their legislators and say that, you know, this is the type of medicine we want. We don't mm -hmm. want to be taking pills, pills that, you know, right now if you take a pharmaceutical for atherosclerosis, you're, you're likely to die of that very disease. It may slow it, it may ameliorate it, but what we want to do is we want to cure it. And we really need people to pioneer the effort to not only spread the word, but to insist that they have access to this kind of medicine, insist that the, the, the costs of this kind of medicine are, are driven down significantly. Yeah. Uh, you know, one company, uh, we we can we, we will start, we will do the best we can, uh, but it's going to take more than one of us. We need to have a situation where we can treat uh, people here in the U.S. under compassionate care scenario. We need the rights to access medicine for ourselves. I want you to have the right to say, I want a gene therapy. This is my body and I'll use it as I please. And, and I want the right to cure my body of disease. You know, we need all of this grassroots movement in order to make a, a really big paradigm shift in how we treat disease yeah so what should people do next with that they should come and see what we're doing they should educate themselves and they should get really excited about the future <laughs> I think that those are the things that they should do yeah. and if they are investors they should invest because this is this is where the future of this technology is going
Yeah. And those that are in right now are obviously going to benefit the most from it. Yeah. Liz, I want to be the first one to thank you. Everyone should check out bioviva-science.com. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.